Perhaps we all know that when resistors are connected in series, then the equivalent resistance is simply the sum of the individual resistance values. So for example, in series, we can write the following equation. The equivalent resistance is equal to the resistance value of resistor 1 plus the resistance value of resistor 2. Now, we are told that the equivalent resistance in the series arrangement is 16 ohms. So we can actually set R1 plus R2 equal to 16 ohms. In the parallel arrangement, the equation is slightly more complex. We have 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And the question tells us that in this arrangement, in parallel, the equivalent resistance is equal to 3 ohms. So we can actually set this equal to 1 over 3 ohms. And our job, of course, is to find the individual resistance values R1 and R2. Now, to do that, we might wish to take the series equation and solve that for R2. And so to do that, we will subtract R1 from both sides. This will cancel it on the left side, and we can see now that R2 is equal to 16 minus R1. We can then substitute 16 minus R1 into the R2 value of the parallel equation. So now we have 1 over R1 plus 1 over 16 minus R1 is equal to 1 over 3. Now, to proceed, we'll have to find a common denominator. So we'll put this quantity in parentheses, and we will multiply this denominator by R1, as well as the numerator by R1. And then for the other denominator, we'll have to multiply it by 16 minus R1, as well as the numerator. And once we've established the common denominator, we can actually merge this into one single fraction. So we'll have R1 multiplied by 16 minus R1 in the denominator, and then up top we have 16 minus R1 plus R1. And this will equal 1 over 3. Continu continuing on, we can see the minus R1 and the plus R1 cancel, so now we just have 16 left in the numerator. And perhaps the next best step is to cross multiply. So we'll multiply 16 times 3, that's going to give us 48. And then we'll multiply the other way. And the quantity R1 times 16 minus R1 is only being multiplied by 1, so it will remain unchanged. Let's distribute the R1. So we'll have 16 R1 minus R1 squared equals 48. We will move the 48 and rearrange the terms. So we'll have negative R1 squared plus 16 R1 minus 48 equals 0. I prefer to divide each term by negative 1. So basically switch the signs of each term. And you're left with this equation here. And it turns out that this equation actually conveniently factors. If yours doesn't, you might want to use the quadratic formula. But in this case, we'll have r1 minus 4 multiplied by r1 minus 12 is equal to 0. And this works, of course, because minus 4 and minus 12 multiply to a positive 48. But they also add to make a minus 16. So now we can basically just set each factor equal to 0. r1 minus 4 equals 0 r1 minus 12 equals 0. In the first case, we get r1 equals 4 ohms. And in the second case, we get r1 equals 12 ohms. Now, let's not forget that r2 was 16 minus r1. So we can solve for r2 in each case by taking 16 and subtracting the r1 value. So in the first case, we're going to get r2 equaling 12 ohms. And then in the second case, r2 will actually equal 4 ohms. Now if you study these numbers carefully, you actually have the same set of numbers in both cases. You have both a 4 ohm resistor and a 12 ohm resistor in the first case, and then it kind of inverts and you have a 12 ohm and 4 ohm resistor in the second case. The labels are different, but the bottom line is the question wants us to simply report the smaller resistance for part A and then the largest, larger resistance for part B. So for part A, the smaller resistance would be the 4 ohms. And then for part B, the larger resistance would be 12 ohms. 
the actual individual labels of R1 and R2 were arbitrary. So all that matters is the smaller value for part A and the larger value for part B.